Hey, what's happening, guys? Hope you all had an excellent, excellent Independence Day. I've got something pretty cool for us here today. This is a scope meter. Let's see if we can focus on that there. It is the E1 ET201 scope meter. And as you can see from this nice little decal, it's from our friends at Banggood. And I would like to say that Banggood provided this to us free of charge for our consideration. So first things first, we've got the manual here. Uh, written in typical Chinglish, but it does however say that if you lose it, you can go to www.et521.net to download a copy of this manual. Other things it says. All right, here is safety instructions and here are the, um, the limits. So, maximum voltage DC 1000 volts AC 750 RMS Hertz 250 volts okay milliamps AC DC 200 milliamps at the input terminal 500 milliamps DC RMS 250 volt 400 milliamp burnt fuse Amps AC DC 20 amp at the input, 20 amp AC DC RMS for 30 second. Um, resistance diode continuity 250 volt AC DC RMS. Capacitance 250 volt DC RMS. I know that doesn't make much sense to me either. So, it is a, um, a rather A comprehensive manual and don't worry I'm not going to go through the whole thing I'm just kind of scanning through it here so you guys can see it all right let's take a look at what's in the bag and it does come with this nice carrying bag here So inside the bag is a transistor checker plug, probes, and the meter itself. Which appears to have an infrared port. All right, at its widest point, the meter is three and three quarter inches. It is seven and a half inches long, and it is one and a half inches high. Now I'm gonna, hopefully, zoom in here so you guys can see this cat 3 600 volts and it uses three double a batteries now the meter itself is about average weight feels very sturdy injection molded ABS plastic so far so good all right the probes probes say they are cat 3 rated and of course they have the high voltage protection nubs on them there but I'll tell you no, those aren't high voltage protection nubs. 
those are just caps. They have a silicone type wire, shrouded four millimeter banana plugs that are capped. I'm going to pull the caps out and we'll plug her in. Now one thing I notice about these probes is they are flexible. I don't particularly like that in a probe, but I am also not saying whether it's good or bad. Just my preference. Alright, here's the tilting bale. It sits up relatively nice. You are able to push the buttons without knocking it over. But you're not going to be able to turn that dial one-handed. All right, let me get set up and we're going to try some different measurements with this guy. All right, we're going to begin with voltage measurements. And since it's not auto ranging, we'll have to set each range ourselves, which yeah, no big deal. Press it and turn it on. Guess I didn't press it hard enough. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to hook this up to my bench power supply here. And our first reading, 200 millivolts. Give me a little bit of an overload there. We can dial in about 100 milli. Well, it's going overload at 100 millivolts, so not an auspicious start. Let's turn her up to 2 volts. And we'll go up to 1 volt. Alright, so my bench power supply is showing 1 volt, and we're seeing 1.2. 225 here. Um, all right. Let's go up to 2 volts. I'm showing 2 on the bench power supply. And it was over. Now it's showing 1.918. I'm showing 1.7. Let me grab another meter and see which one of these is off. Okay, it would seem that the problem is in my bench power supply and not in the meter, which seems to be pretty good so far. So let's turn it up to 20 volts. And let's take it up to 5 volts showing on the Centec meter. have to readjust my bench power supply again. <laughs> Boy, I can't get it right on there, can I? I mean, that's just a hair touch. I'm going to say it is fairly accurate so far. Let's take it up to 10 volts. and see what we get 10.02 10.05 I mean I can live with that all right let's take it up to 20 volts all right so 20 volts it's a little bit off but still awfully close all right let's put it up in the 200 volt range and I'm going to go to the maximum that my meter can display or my my bench can 
jeez, I can't talk, that my PSU can output. So it is showing 31, and we are getting just about 31. All right. So that's pretty good in the voltage measurement. I'm going to power down the bench supply here. And let's go on to something else. All right, next up, we are going to do resistance. I've got a 100K resistor here. Let's check it with the Sentec. 98.9K. And then let's check it with the ET201. 99.1, so it's a little bit off, a little low, but um, definitely doable. All right, next, let's go to diode mode. You remember what I'm doing here? <laughs> so, Here's our first, this is a little silicone switching diode, 1N4007. One Hold on here, I'm having trouble getting my leads to stay on it with the Sentec. 99.1K, nothing reversed. And in forward, showing a drop of 0.549. So let's try it with the ET201 eh, reading a little bit high but that's all right let's try it with a germanium diode point six eight one okay the next let's go and check an LED it's a little three millimeter blue LED also a diode and it lights it but is not showing me anything on the meter so let me try that with the Sentec and see what we get. Okay. Well, the Sentex lighting it, but not showing anything either, so we'll call that good. Next up, uh, we're going to go capacitance. I got a hundred microfarad electrolytic here. Let's see what we get on the Sentec first. See if we can change the range here. No, it doesn't seem to want to let me change the range now, does it? Okay. Let's try it with the T201. There's our capacitor. Hook up the negative to the cathode and the positive. Uh oh no it's in diode mode yeah it's not showing anything at all hmm I'm sorry this is a capacitor I am a complete dumbass one moment We'll put it on the 
200 microfarad range. Still have the cathode hooked up. Let me hook up the anode. Not. Not getting anything at all. All right. Well, that one's not so good. Let's try a 104 ceramic. Okay. That's good showing that. Alrighty. And let's take a look at couple of transistors. Alrighty guys, I only found one transistor sitting around here. It's a PNP of 5906. So we put our transistor tester in the middle two slots, turn the dial to the HFE range, power it up, and it shows us our amplification rating of about 278, 279. Let's just call it 280 and round it up from there. That's pretty good. going to check a MOSFET. This is an NPN MOSFET, but the pins do not fit in these tiny little holes, so we can't check a MOSFET out. Sorry. All right, how about we look at some frequency measurements. I've got my Elenco frequency generator here, and it's in square wave mode, and it is set for about 500 hertz. I have this guy on Hertz, so let's power it up and see what comes out. 4.99, okay, well, not too bad. Let's crank her up a little. There's 10K, 10.451, we're getting 10.48, alrighty. Up we go again. 247.6, 47.7, and the ET201 is reading 47.8, close enough. Let's take it up. And at 577 kilohertz, it's lost it. So let's bring her down. and see where she comes back. Okay, so with 200 kilohertz limit. Now we know. Okay, so the next thing we can do is take a look at the scope function. Alrighty, the scope function. So we're still in square wave mode and we are at just about five kilohertz. So we'll power up the device. It says to put it in voltage mode and we press display. And here we have a nice little frequency counter, our voltage measurement. Okay, the up and down arrows 
are our time base and the select is our voltage on the horizontal okie dokie let's change our frequency here and take her up there's a hundred forty one and a half kilohertz and it says the big no alright okay we've got a waveform at 96 kilohertz but it's basically unusable and the frequency reading is not coming up so let's slow her down some more take her under 20 I guess okay so 20k is the limit on the scope now the rise and fall times are not spectacular and well it's definitely usable all right let's slow our way down here there's a hundred and sixty three Hertz alright now we have vertical rise and fall times and flat tops and bottoms so let's take it up here right around her right around 1k see what we're getting adjusting adjusting bear with me here this thing doesn't, you know, it's just got potentiometers for adjustment. Okay, so we're, I'm seeing 1.077, 1.072. So at 1 kilohertz, we're looking pretty doggone good. All right, let's put it in sine wave mode. Oh, that was the wrong one. All right, in sine wave, I mean, that's, that is making a very nice sine wave. Let's change our frequency here. There's 2K, 5K, 5.5. All right, so at 5.5K. Again, nice sine wave. This is pretty impressive. As long as you keep, you know, <laughs> the frequencies in its usable range. All right, at 33k. That's right, we're above the 20k limit there. So there's 16k. it's kind of losing it a little bit take it back down here bring her back up around 2k how's that 1.7 and we will switch over to a triangle wave very respectable very respectable indeed 
So with the $50 price range on this, this is a really nice little meter. And if you don't have a scope, this is definitely something that you can use. Yeah, for 50 bucks, you can't beat something like this. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Well, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover in the review of this. I want to thank our friends at Banggood for sending this for our consideration. I will post a link to it down below. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. And feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm also going to put a general shopping link to Banggood down there that lets them know that you are coming to them after viewing one of my videos for an item they sent. If you're going to go to Banggood, go to it through one of these links so they know that, you know, we're doing some good. That's it. I'm out. You guys have a great time.